George say what he said pertaining to Spade Harmon. I've never met the man, but I got three checks for officiating by the name of Spade Harmon. I replaced him on those three occasions. And all three of those occasions, uh, he had been retired for a bit, and I think they perhaps had a long-standing tradition of hiring him. And so I, I kind of felt maybe I was in pretty good stead now, because he cited him as being a pretty good official, and I replaced him. So I hope he'll do that. Well, our next inductee is no newcomer to those of us in the wrestling communities in Iowa. Certainly, uh, it is my great privilege to, to uh, introduce him tonight. He's one of my really fond uh, people in the sport of wrestling, watching him from his boyhood days and right up through high school and college. And I was telling him earlier this evening that there's so many great wrestlers that we can all speak about, but in the era that he uh, came up through the high school ranks, and he and another young man, who, uh, whose name is not uh, going to be mentioned at this time, but to me, were cited as being the real, real technicians of the high school ranks in that 1980 era. And um, Tim Krieger certainly was was fun to watch because he had great technique, and uh, not a lot of kids had that at that particular time. But to say that Tim Krieger was a dominant force in Iowa wrestling in the 80s was certainly a gross understatement because he certainly was a, a very dominant force in in high school and collegiate wrestling during that time. Tim was a three-time state high school champion and a two-time national champion, compiling an astonishing career, astonishing career. And you know when we talk about careers now, we can give wins, losses, etc. And you, ought to, you have to take them out of context because the number of contests that uh, young men that are competing in today versus what number of the uh, former competitors compete in, it's really quite a difference, so it isn't uh, probably as, as, uh, as, you know, taken in vain that maybe one ought to. When you talk about, uh, Tim, in this case, 219 wins, nine, nine losses, and four ties during that particular era, there's some guys today that have a great many more wins, but they didn't compete in that many contests uh, in those days, and so that really is quite an astonishing career. And that particular record that Tim has was was uh, in, was only involving the high school ranks and the collegiate ranks, and didn't include his freestyle wrestling, which he was a junior national champion in. Uh, likewise, uh, I think Tim probably distinguished himself, in my estimation, right from the start, placing fourth as a ninth grader, freshman, if you wish, at the high school ranks and uh, in the 112-pound class. I don't know if he could make that today. But uh, he went 20 wins, 5 losses, and 2 ties at that time as a freshman, and placed, uh, as I indicate, fourth. From that point on, though, the tide had turned, and he really, uh, he really did a great job. Uh, he then won the 119-pound title as a sophomore with a 28-1 record, and uh, a second state title as a junior in a 132-pound class with a 28-0 record and then capped off his high school career, his senior season with a 27-0 mark uh, his senior year. And the interesting part of his senior year in the state tournament, he pinned all of his opponents, being named the most outstanding wrestler of the state tournament by the Des Moines Register in that particular year. So Tim was off in high gear at that time. Um, after a redshirt year in Cyclone Country at Iowa State, Tim was the first wrestler in the history of the NCAAs, Division I, to receive a number one seed all four years at the national tournament. That's quite an accomplishment, and that certainly tells, I can stop right there, they would tell you an awful lot about this young man. As a freshman of 150 pounds, Jim placed fifth, and then followed that up with an NCAA title as a sophomore with an impressive overtime win over Iowa's Jim Heffernan. As a junior, 1988, um, Tim lost a heartbreaking 1-1, 1-0 overtime finals match to North Carolina's Scott Turner. Some of you in the wrestling uh, program at that time will remember that young man likewise. Tim finished off his career at the collegiate level with the second national title while <clears throat> being named the tournament's most outstanding wrestler. And when you consider the, the clientele, if you wish, the, the real uh, the real wrestling expertise that those gentlemen have at that level 
in, in this day and age, that's quite an accomplishment to be named the most outstanding wrestler in that particular event. And Tim, of course, was named the most outstanding wrestler. But interestingly enough also, I found that Tim <coughs> had three falls and 11 all major decision en route to his finals championship on his senior year. And uh, he defeated a young man out of Mount Clare State 5-0 in his finals match, and that young man had a 44-2 and two record that year, both losses being to Tim. So that tells you what kind of a senior year he had. Other major awards that Tim had are similar to that of George in some respects. Tim, won, if you wish, was named or won the most prestigious uh, 1988-89 Big 8 Conference Athlete of the Year Award. When you consider all the athletic programs and the great athletes that competed at that time, that's quite an accomplishment. He also was named the ISU Athlete of the Year 1988-89. He was also a four-time All-American, quite a feat. He was the second four-time Big 8 champion. So uh, that's another feat that's not often met. I think probably a real good insight to Tim's wrestling career, I would sum it up in, in the following way. His devotion to the sport, of course, is obvious uh, with his background, but I think it came after winning his second national title when Tim had made comment as to the following. After the match, he says, I, I, I don't ever think I can be beaten no matter who I'm wrestling. That gives you a little idea of the kind of devotion that he gave to the sport. <coughs> his, uh, his love for the sport shows when he also said, I don't remember much about the final match. But he did say, I wonder what, it's going to, what I'm going to feel like when I can no longer feel the way that I do at this time. And all I can say to Tim is join the ranks of the rest of us. <laughs> because, you know, that, I'm sure that has to be a great feeling for those of you in the room, as well as Tim, who won national championship. That's, that's a great feat. Um, Tim also was an inductee in the Iowa High School Wrestling Hall of Fame. And a couple of tidbits on Tim that I learned of also. When Tim started out, like a lot of young people today, at the youth wrestling level, his dad, Herb, of course, very much involved in wrestling, too, and was a good athlete and a good wrestler himself at the high school level. But he knew the rewards that came about through competing in high school and, and wrestling in general, and so he wanted his son to be involved likewise. So he got involved in the youth program at the YMCA and, and other levels, and, uh, and certainly wanted to be very much involved with Tim in his, uh, in his corner and the various matches that he might be involved in. And, Tim made it quite clear to Dad and Mom at that time that, that uh, he really would care not to have him at that corner coaching and certainly didn't want for him to make any scene. And if he did, he probably would lay down and get pinned on purpose. So, uh, so Mom and Dad kind of stayed where I tried to stay when my kids were in athletics and that's in the top row somewhere where you're out of sight. But all kidding aside, it, uh, likewise, it tells you what kind of parents that Tim had is, as well as his devotion to wrestling. They certainly in my estimation, raised a young man who I consider not only a great athlete, but a real gentleman of the sport. And uh, I don't know how a, a guy is, uh, with a gentleman like that, go out and whip the guys like he did on the map, but he, he surely did it. Uh, also, I understand that Jim was competing in a tournament at Lincoln, Nebraska one time, and he had called home because his, his mother tells me why everything he owned and kept, being in school and wrestling, that those were his two lives going to class and, and going to wrestling, and he locked his keys in his car. In his car, so his mom and dad jumped in the car, stormy night, lightning, rain, etc., and drove another set of keys to him in Lincoln, and lo and behold, two or three in the morning, as they pull in uh, on the, along the highway, who's out running? Jim Krieger. So what I'm really saying to you in a nice way, that he was not only devoted to the sport, but it shows you his commitment by his own choice to the sport that he so very much loved. And I think that's so important to remember. It was his choice. He wanted to be what he was. He got the values a lot of young men reap, at least the values that most of us hope they reap as a result of participating. And then, of course, uh, molded himself into an excellent citizen and uh, certainly a great representative of Iowa High School, Mohawk land wrestling, and Cyclone Country as a Division I national champion. So at this time, I present to you the next inductee, Hall of Fame member, Tim Krieger.
wanted to check the weather because when I was here in 82, we had a snowstorm. <laughs> and we got stuck for three days. It was it three days? How long were we here? It was three days. And we could not get to Mason City, two hours away. And I remember driving home, and it was like a, a tunnel of snow driving home. So there's, I'm going to get out of here soon. Because <laughs> you just never know. Did we stay with him? We were talking about that. Dr. Shaw's family? Any, anybody? <coughs> Is he here? Back there? Your hospitality was, I, 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 how many people did we have in that house? 18 people staying in his house for three days. A bunch of squirrely high school wrestlers and cheerleaders. I will never forget that as long as I live. Thank you for your hospitality. And uh, maybe my father give you a little check or something. <laughs> we cleaned out the fridge. I think we were cutting weight and we cleaned out the fridge and <laughs> talked to her. <laughs> Care. I, I will never forget that, but no, the hospitality it, it, of everybody in Cresco, I mean, it, it rallied around us. I mean, it was it was just fantastic, but uh, it was quite a storm, so that is something that we, something else that we... we 82, you said? 82, wasn't it? 82. Something else that we share in common. And you were also, by the way, I don't, did, did you mention you were a national champion javelin thrower? Did they mention that? I was reading that in a bio. <laughs> Unbelievable. By the way, I coach it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say hi, you might whoop me too. Uh, All-American all National Champion Javelin Thrower. Is that right? NCAA Champion. NCAA Champion Javelin Thrower. That, that is unbelievable. I, I was a javelin catcher. <laughs> Some of my fondest members are traveling around to the, you know, the kid tournaments, uh, 
and, and, and they couldn't always make it, you know, because they had they had a business to run and so forth, and which <clears throat> I kind of like a lot of the time. But <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, we traveled around, and, and uh, it was it's funny. I mean, we used to wrestle. You know, we'd always bump into Waterloo, and and I'd always uh, wrestle uh, uh, Brandon Tate. And in fact, my father wrestled his father uh, at the state tournament. Uh, you know. Back in what hot six or something, like that. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I ended up wrestling Brandon in the state finals, and, and his brother Bill ended up being a teammate of mine at Iowa State. And it's it's a small community. It's uh, it's uh, it, it's really neat. And so you know, when you see those people, it's you know, you, you throw a big bear hug around them, and uh, and uh, it's 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 great to see those people. But and that goes way back when I was a kid. You know, the, the same group of people. And that's how you come in here, and it's like. It's like kind of like family. I see so many faces. I mean, I, I remember like the first time in, in high school that I felt I kind of arrived. I won the I won the Osage Quad, which that was big. You know, the Osage Quad was kind of the big, you know, the big kickoff to the season when I was a freshman. I beat uh, Reggie Goodall, Goodale, Goodale, and he was pretty tough. He was salty. I think he had placed here before. And I remember my my father being really excited. I, I mean, I didn't I didn't know who he was, but apparently that family's. Pretty, pretty strong in wrestling over there, as I found out later, and, and that was a big win for me. And, uh, and so many, there's been an awful lot of good wrestlers that came through, came through there, and, and through through that program as well. In fact, obviously, my good friend Mark Schwab, who's up at the who's up at the U now, doing a terrific job uh, coaching the national champion Gophers. <laughs> Time state champ and derailed uh, in college because of severe knee injuries. Uh, but certainly, in my mind, one of the I think he won three junior high school national championships as well. And one of the great high school wrestlers that I ever saw, a good friend of mine, <coughs> certainly deserving of that. And, and you people in Osage, which I think is pretty much except for this group right here, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, got to see Mark wrestle. Uh, and, and by the way, talking about. Uh, uh, Bill Nelson, his nephew is sitting over here in black, <laughs> right there. So, sir, you might want to scoot that way a little bit. <laughs> Sean Nelson was a teammate of mine at May City High, and his father Don uh, lives in May City. And that is, that's Bill's nephew. And and some more memories, uh, you know. Certainly, Sean lives in Chicago, and you know, I I, you know, as thirty some year old guys, you know, we don't keep in touch very often. And, and I turn around and here he is standing behind me, Mark. My other buddy Mark Mathis called him up and, and said, "Hey, you know Tim's getting inducted in, <clears throat> in Cresco, and Sean drives over from from uh, Chicago, and Mark comes over from Fort Dodge, and these were two of my teammates, and and two of my you know biggest reasons for success, probably my junior and senior year, which I felt I was the best wrestler in high school from 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 my high school career. That's Mark Mathis here. Mark, stand up a second, please. <laughs> and, and Sean Nelson, right beside him." although I wish it was you instead of me. <laughs> but, you know, they were the guys that worked out with me in the summer when, when nobody else wanted to. Uh, when I needed a workout partner, was on training, when I was training for the Junior Nationals, you know, I lived in Mason City. You know, there's no college. There's nobody to work out with. Those two guys showed up every time, and, and they were always there. And, and I can never repay them for what they did for me. I mean, I'm here because of them, uh, a big part of it. And, and uh, Sean was kind of mean and nasty like his uncle, <laughs> but, he, but now he's a great guy. And, and, uh, he, he, I had to mention his name, otherwise he's taken it out and, and I, put, I left my glasses in the car. <laughs> but they, they honestly, Sean and Mark, were, they're, they're two of my best friends and, and uh, you know, again, with wrestling's a brotherhood, uh, you know, we'll, you know, we'll share that brotherhood for as long as we live and, and I mean, it just goes to show, I mean, here, and, and Mark's mother, Carol, <clears throat> who, you know, I mean, you know, every wrestler, you have the big breakfast in the morning, always, you know, eggs and bacon and toast and the whole deal. Uh, uh, Carol, stand up a second. Carol was kind of, she was kind of the wrestling mom that a lot of the kids <laughs>
kind of miles ago. They just they're there, and <laughs> but certainly, uh, my, my you know my parents were the 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 biggest reason behind you know any success that I had. You know, uh, uh, my mom supported you know I mean from from dieting to to uh, you know training to, to the odd hours to everything, and uh, you know I can never thank my parents enough. And, and certainly, my dad was my first coach and and my best coach. He he presented me opportunities in the sport. And, and didn't make me hate it. You know, didn't push me too hard. And I, and I think he, you know, he realized that maybe. I mean, we're you know strong German. I think you know what's the old saying? You can you can always tell a German, but you can't tell him much. And, <laughs> and I think I think he understood that. And you know, and I certainly understood that. So it, 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 you know, they 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 but they did everything for me. They they supported me in a way that. You know, to foster my growth and, and up to the next level, where um, it, you know, when I talk about wrestling, I, I, I honestly feel I tell people I was I was terribly, terribly lucky. I mean, I don't. I just had so many advantages. I ran into so many good people and so many good opportunities. It, it just it just seemed like God was smiling on me all the time, and and that kind of went on with my high school coach, uh, Jerry Ray here, who again. I, you know, I didn't even call Jerry and tell him because I hate to drag him into stuff like this. <laughs> but Jerry's standing right here, and then he stood up once. I want to make him stand up again. Please, uh, Coach. And, and, and Jerry was the perfect coach for me because he he's never once taken credit for anything that I did, although he certainly deserves all the credit in the world. He, he was... Uh, you know, he was, he was a, a mentor and, and a coach and a friend, and, and you know, he... You know, I can't say enough about Coach Ray, uh, but the, the, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many different things. You know, I, I think back, we, uh, we wrestled for Dodge, our bitter rival, it's Dirty Rotten, <laughs> but, and we beat him, and it turns out one of the guys on the team, you know, cheated on the way in, and, and I had heard about it, and, you know, I didn't know what to do. Well, as soon as Coach Ray found out about it, he, he called, he called and said, hey, we had a... You know, this is what this isn't. You know, we got to understand why we're doing this and what wrestling's about. And I remember talking to the team and just said, you know, that's the way that it is. We cheated. You can't win by doing that. That is not what wrestling's about. And it was embarrassing and it was hard because we, you know, we had beaten them. And but you know, with the with the reverse, you know, we we lost a duel and, and it was for the conference. And but there was never a question. That's the kind of person that, that Jerry Ray was, and 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 that's the kind of program that he ran and, and the kind of person that he that he was. And he exemplified that to us. And and. You know, I can't tell enough how, how much that meant to me and how much he helped me as a person grow. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, you get, you go through, and, and Jerry didn't have all the accolades of some of the other great coaches, whether it be for, you know, kids in the program or this or that, but, but in, in my book, he was the best high school coach that I was ever around. And, and uh, he just, I, I certainly wouldn't be up here without him. Or his wife, Shirley, uh, you know, giving him support, giving the team support as well. Shirley, sit beside and you'll probably shoot me for making you stand up, won't you? I'll make you stand up anyway. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. Thank you. Jimmy Zaleski and, and Barry Davis and, and thinking that I wanted to be, you know, the state tournament, uh, the great voice of Doug Brown, uh, you know, thinking I wanted to be a state champion and a, and a national champion like those guys. And, and that's kind of where it started. And, and it just kind of grew. We kind of got a program going. Uh, Coach Ray was running a, a terrific high school program. And, and my dad took me as far as he could take me and then he let me go. And, uh, and we were kind of off and running. Uh, my, probably my fondest memory in wrestling is when I was a sophomore in 82, after we got back from the snowstorm, <laughs> I think most people survived. We, we ended up, uh, we, took, we took second in state. We had four state champs, and we had four other place winners. And we set a scoring record for, for Class 3A. Unfortunately, Bettendorf set a higher scoring record that same year, which is unbelievable. I and mean, we would have won the tournament any other year. But uh, uh, so be it. Uh, it was my first state title. Uh, Dale Fallon uh, was 
98 pounder, Todd Piper, who went into the tournament uh, with a losing record and ended up state champion. Ended up beating a guy named Stuart Carter, who ended up being pretty good for Iowa State. Uh, Stuart was a national champion, but uh, Piper beat Carter in the finals, uh, and, and, and my brother at heavyweight. So in 82, we had four champs, four place winners, and it certainly was significant to me. Uh, uh, 20 years earlier, in 62, my dad was state champion. And so my dad and then my brother and I, uh, 20 years later. And, and that's probably my, my fondest memory and moment. And, and uh, you know, I mean, so much of it's about family and, and brotherhood and so forth. And, and it, was a, it was a terrific experience. That, uh, that I'll always remember. Um, I, probably the other thing that, that so clearly stands out was, uh, <clears throat> well, beside the losses, and yes, I do think about the losses, <laughs> but that, that certainly that's part of wrestling, and, and, and wrestling, like anything else, provides us with humbling experiences, and, and I had those as well. Um, I had those in high school, and I had those in college, and, and I, I needed those. I think those were all good for me. And, uh, Wrestling will always provide you with that, guaranteed, guaranteed. Somewhere, somehow, they will. But uh, the, uh, you know, the, the other big thing that stands in my mind, when I was a sophomore, uh, we had uh, five guys on the team in the finals. Uh, myself, Bill Kelly, uh, Eric Boak from Dallas Center Grimes, uh, Stuart Carter uh, from Waterloo, Columbus, and, and Kevin Jackson. And we ended up <coughs> having uh, four national champs out of five in the finals, and the other one <coughs> really got ripped. Indy less, it was bad. And you got a big pull. Yeah, I got beat by some slouch from Iowa. <laughs> 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 it was a good man, but uh, I, I don't know about all that stalling, Dan. What do you think? Dan, this <coughs> on? But anyway, we had we had we had four national champs and, and fifth and and, uh, and then we had or I'm sorry four national champs a second and then additionally a third and and I think the other thing that that I love so much about about that team out of five in the finals uh, three of those were from Iowa Eric Boker was from Dallas Center Grimes I mean down by Des Moines who talk about a great story took third as a senior in high school nobody had heard of him ends up being a two-time national champ and that was his first title and three-time All-American, and, and terrific story, and I, I'm sure people remember the big red-headed guy, he just had a freight train double, and it just, just was terrific, um, you know, coming out of a small town, so he was a terrific story. And then uh, Stuart Carter, 58, who the year before uh, was my backup at 50, and couldn't make the team at 50, couldn't make the team at 58 because of Bill Tate. Uh, Bill Tate had some injuries and so forth, so he went up to 58 and won a national championship at 58. And uh, so we had, we had three guys in the finals from Iowa, and, and half our team, five kids were from Iowa. And, and, and that, that actually, that means a lot to me. And I, I would like to see that again someday before I die at Iowa State. And, and I do like to see it at Iowa. But, uh, you know, there, there's good kids in Iowa. And, and I, I mean, that, that was just exemplary of, of I think, the, you know, there was a nice upsurge of good Iowa kids back then. Uh, <coughs> And incidentally, in that tournament, we did beat the school out east. Uh, they're from out east and across the river there. Uh, Iowa. We beat Iowa. We beat Iowa. Aren't most people from Osage Iowa fans, by the way? I, I heard you're supposed to win the crowd. I didn't do it there. Did we did. Fortunately for us, we got lucky and beat Iowa. And uh, it, it was a terrific tournament. They were going for their 10th, uh, which would have been neat to see, but but not on my watch. And, and uh, uh, it, w it was a terrific time for us. Uh, and I, and I, think, I think it was good for the sport. I mean, what, what, what Dan uh, built there at Iowa was, you know, it was, it was phenomenal. And I mean, he set the bar so high uh, uh, for, for people like me to jump at it. And, uh, you know, I can only, I can only thank him. Uh, but uh, it was, you know, that was a great time. And, and incidentally, I, <clears throat> I lucked out maybe, I don't know. And, and beat the, the, the Iowa guy in the finals, and uh, 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 won my first national title, which was, you know, it was certainly, a, I guess, maybe a relief more than anything. I thought I should have won the year before, and, and uh, uh, you know, I had beaten Jim, uh, that was the third time I wrestled him that year, and, and uh, beat him in the finals, and, and, and a tough match, because Jim was a tough wrestler. But it was, uh, it was, 
it was just so much fun because we had we had a great people around the program. Les Anderson over here, Les Anderson, uh, who let Les stand up a second. Where are you standing? Oh. <laughs> wrestling coach, and one of the greatest I think the, the sport has seen, but, but certainly a, a, a great friend. Uh, you know, I don't know, I mean, you ask any wrestling coach if there is a better clinician in the country, and, and they probably say no, less than the best. And, uh, and, and a great person, a great ambassador for the sport. And it's, it's, it's great to see Les here, because I, I live down the street from Les, and, and he never had anything in his fridge. And, <laughs> but he always had his door open. But uh, uh, Les is a great guy, and, and it was great to have him you know, be part of that with me. I was probably closer to uh, Les than anybody else on the coaching staff, and, and Les helped me tremendously. Um, uh, just, I mean, Les had been there so much, and, 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 and I, I needed that. I, I, I needed that uh, maybe being a little not, not so assured. Uh, you know, I, was, uh, I honestly was a you know, small town, uh, you know, Shy kid, and, and to this day I still am, and I think that's one of the nice things about wrestling that kind of helped me help me uh, uh, get out of that. But um, Les, I, you know, I, I attribute a lot to Les, and so again, I, I was very lucky. I was lucky to have Les and Eddie Bannock uh, there at Iowa State with me to to uh, uh, get me there. Um, you know, I certainly, <clears throat> you know, remember. You know, I probably remember the loss as much as anything, and, and that's part of wrestling. Like I said, I mean, we. You know, uh, we need those humbling experiences. So, you know, I went to Iowa State. I didn't tell anybody, but I went to Iowa State, and, and I planned on being a four-time undefeated national champion. And uh, like I said, I didn't tell anybody. That never goes over very well with fresh, when you're a freshman, kind of spreading that around. Last kid that did that, we taped him up and threw him down on the basketball court. <laughs> but, but that was the goal. And, and I obviously didn't do it, uh, but I came three one-point matches away from it, and, and, and that wasn't too bad. I, I think if I didn't have that goal of, of doing that, um, I, you know, I wouldn't have come as close. So uh, it was, uh, you know, I had a terrific run. I, I have great memories of, of, of wins, and, and I also have disappointing memories, and, and, and seven knee surgeries. Um, after my uh, junior year, I had three knee surgeries in a, you know, basically after the tournament, in the summer, and then in the fall again, and kind of struggled through my senior year uh, wrestling three days a week because uh, uh, I just I needed a year to recover, and I didn't have it. Uh, I didn't have a, a redshirt year, didn't have anything to use up. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the perseverance to get through the, the senior year, um, you know, I learned a lot about myself, and, and it was tough, but uh, you, you get through it and do what you can. So, uh, you know, I, <clears throat> I have nothing but, but fond memories and, and you know, the, the friendships you build, uh, uh, you know, go on the, the rest of your life. It, 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 it's, you know, I, the other day I was at the grocery store and, and <clears throat> a guy notices my ear, which it, I got a little cauliflower ear, a little one. <laughs> it's certainly a lot better than Gable's. <laughs> Have you seen his? <laughs> but the guy noticed my ear and said, oh, I used to wrestle. I said, yeah, you know, way, way back when. And he says, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I was in, in junior high, and God, I had to wrestle this guy, and oh, he just squeezed me, and I, you know, he tells me this story about when he's in junior high wrestling. And, you know, I, I, I honestly listen to him with, I mean, the enthusiasm that I, that I listen to any of the stories, and, and, and you know, that's the great thing about wrestling. Uh, and, I, and I don't know if Dan even remembers when I was a freshman, I went to a training camp, and, and me and Volker were, were bugging him about stories about, about him and, and, and Chuck Jean and Tom Peckham and, <laughs> you know, and wild deer and all, you know. I always want those old stories. Of, you know, the crazy deer, they're going to get you. So. <laughs> but, I, you know, that, that's, that's part of, you know, the, the, the folklore of, of uh, amateur wrestling that I love so much. And so, you know, I listen to this guy tell me a story, you know, with the enthusiasm that you know, I kind of tell my own that are, you know, that I force you people to listen to with my own. And, and that, that's one of the great things about wrestling, because that, that guy's a brother of ours, that, that, you know, he's been through it, he's been in the trenches, and 
and his family's been through it, and his mother has cooked the meals, and, and his friends have put up with him being crabby, and, you know, I mean, just the whole deal, and, and, and that's what's so neat about, you know, seeing all these people come out and, and, and support the Hall of Fame, and, and, and induct long-winded people like me, and, 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 and uh, but, uh, uh, you know, another reason why I love the sport so much, so, uh, I want to thank you for having me up here, um, it, it is a, a, a great honor, a great honor to uh, be inducted, and, and it's, it's so nice to see so many people here uh, support me. Uh, I see my, my attorney, Larry Severson, came here from, from New Hampton. In case I said anything, Larry, can you get a red dirt? If anybody's going to sue me, see that fellow right over there. Larry, you know, talking about the Brotherhood, last story, the Brotherhood of Wrestling. I, I moved to Minnesota, I'm in Apple Valley, and, and we open up a business, and we're in the, we're in the Hampton Bank. And, and I'm walking in, and the guy says, you're Tim Krieger. And I said, I said yeah. And, uh, you know, I was a lot taller than him, so I thought I could take him. <laughs> and and uh, he said, well, I've seen you wrestle. He said, you know, I, I'm Larry Severson. He coached my nephew at, uh, at Iowa State, and my brother's Arlen Severson, the coach in New Hampton. And, you know, I wrestled for Nick. And, I mean, I was just floored. And, and you know, it turns out, you know, Larry owned the top floor, the whole building, the bank, everything else. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, yeah, hey, guy, how you doing? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Larry and I have, have actually become become very good friends. And I mean, you know, they're in Apple Valley, Minnesota. I mean, here's a, a fellow cyclone, uh, and, and uh, you know, and, and his brother Arlen sit beside him here. And, and, you know, I mean, Larry's a, a state champ in Ireland as well, you know, here in Iowa, and, and wrestling for Nick at Iowa State. It's a small world, and, and that brotherhood is, you know, will we'll go with us the rest of our days. And, and, you know, it's one of the things that endears wrestling to my heart to, to always be with me. So, again, thank you for inducting me. Thank you for coming out tonight. It, it is truly an honor, and, uh, and appreciate a uh, few of you remember my name. You know. Thanks again.